happening. First guest, of course, today is the Congressman Brad Winstrup. Been there about 10 years. He's on the Intelligence Committee. And uh, so much is happening the first several days of the Congress. Brad Wenstrup, Congressman, Doctor, Soldier, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. And Brad, how are you? I'm doing okay. Much better this week than last week, Bill. <laughs> Was last week good or bad? Because the media pictured it as chaos and confusion. Don't know what you're doing. We're in deep trouble. It's not about you. It's about them politically inside the caucus. How did you process all that? Well, you know, I, I realized what went on with the Demo Democrats uh, two years ago when Nancy Pelosi was trying to be speaker with a slim margin. I guess the difference is they did it really all behind closed doors, and ours was pretty much an open process for all the country to see. Maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. I think in some ways it may be good, but that seems like what we're doing this week. We are ready to move on with what we had hoped to maybe start last yeah. week. That's okay. Um, but we're we're moving along, and I can tell you the tenor and the morale is so much different, even for Democrats, because the way the House was run under Democrats, even they would say it's a mess. And we have been we've been sticking to the program. Our votes go in an orderly fashion. We're no longer walking through magnetometers, and um, no longer have proxy voting. So you better be there to vote, be ready to vote. And we move right along. And so people have time to go about and work on their committees and, and, and spend time with their constituents. How'd you vote on that $1.7 trillion omnibus bill in which everything was put in? There was no debate, no amendments, did not go through the committee process. And proxy voting was everywhere, which means people didn't go to work and Democrats permitted it. How did you vote on that? I voted no. And, uh, you know, certainly there were things in a bill like that that, you, that you're in favor of and some of the things you even fought to get in there. But the process is what we really got to switch around. And that was a lot about what we were debating as far as the House rules. And uh, we really came out with a, a much better product. And we're going to be working to cut spending from the U United States government uh, to be more efficient, uh, to, to fight against fraud, to fight against weaponization of the government, to work on behalf of the American people, to fight inflation, have a a better economy, to make America safe, to make America strong, and we're going to do it in an orderly fashion, the way it's supposed to be done. Hopefully, we'll have great successes. We certainly have an opportunity in the next two years, even with a slim margin, uh, to move forward for all the things that America really wants deep down, and I think that uh, the people had spoken, and that's why we won the House. Uh, how do you break through the, uh, the uh, industrial media democratic complex? and actually get to voters so they understand what proxy voting means and what the amendment process of bills mean and how an omnibus bill that nobody could read, and even Democrats said, Congressman, that we can't read the bill. It's for over 4,000 pages long. It's dropped on their desk if they want to look at it. The great majority of Democrats and Republicans never read the bill. It would take days to read the bill. You voted on something that you didn't know what was in it, but the average American, I have a sense, doesn't care. How do you break through that media democratic complex and actually make Americans understand what's got at risk here is literally the survival of their country? How do you break through? Well, I think one of the things we need to make sure we're doing is we're teaching civics the way our founders had intended it to be. And so that people come out with some kind of knowledge about how their government works or is supposed to work. But when you find yourself affected by it firsthand, uh, then it starts to make a difference to you. But it, it, it should be making a difference to you from the beginning. This isn't how we're supposed to govern. It's not, it's not efficient. It's, how you, it's not how you can run your family. It's not how you can run a business really successfully. But that's what's been happening here. And unfortunately, it's become too much of the norm. One of the things you heard about so, so much about last week was breaking the status quo. And the status quo that has seeped into our government over the last decade or two, and maybe even longer if I study it, um, it, it is a problem for us. And that, so we are trying every day to try and educate the American people on how the process is supposed to work so that their voice is heard. Because certainly when you come down with an omnibus bill like that, the, the representative that represents you doesn't get to really speak no. for you because it comes down to just a few people and mostly staff negotiating uh, what's going to affect the entire country for the next year. As far as those 87,000 IRS agents, 
I don't know where you find in today's world 87,000 of anything to go to work, to be trained for about a year, to, to go through tax returns. I don't know how you find those people. But I understand the first action of the Congress as an IRS agent. And my, my second question to you is, can it be done? It's already in the law, so to speak. It's says underway to hire them, and therefore it doesn't make any difference. If you can answer one, then answer two. Then I got a question number three. Okay. Well, you know, first of all, that it was our first bill was to uh, slash the funding for the Internal Revenue Service uh, to negate the 87,000 IRS agents that uh, were approved in the omnibus bill we were just talking about. And uh, so approved or appropriated is really the key here. What we have to do on the House side is stand strong that when it comes time to passing appropriations bills, that we no longer send any money towards this. Because what we passed yesterday was really more of a messaging bill. It's where we stand. It's what the American people want to see happen, I believe. And w will it go through the Senate? Will it go to the president? No. Uh, that remains to be seen. But there, with a, really where it hits the road, Bill, is in appropriations. <laughs> and we're going to do that. But America needs to understand, you know, this is our first bill. We also passed a bill about <clears throat> trying to make sure the government isn't being weaponized for political purposes. And the IRS is a classic example. If you look at recent years where Lois Lerner was denying conservative groups from being able to be formed, not giving them uh, the certificate that they need to be uh, considered a group. Um, they, we saw the efforts on the Democrat side to get into your bank accounts and follow your every transaction. And uh, we also saw leaks of taxpayer information coming out of the IRS. What we really need to be focusing on is better ways to modernize the IRS, to increase its efficiency, to incentivize efficiency. And instead of just sending more dollars and more people, let's make sure that we're doing things right and to the best of our abilities uh, before we go after the American taxpayer. And at the same time, the same group that was against us defunding this, are the same people that would not look into the fraud, the massive fraud that has taken place with, say, unemployment uh, benefits, etc. And most of that's coming from out of the country. Democrats voted down looking into that on the Ways and Means Committee, uh, yet they want to have more IRS agents going after tax-paying Americans. So what happened uh, from our discussions about, about a month ago, something in the, they don't know the exact number, it's say $100 billion dollars of our money was stolen by Iranians and by uh, Russian uh, bot farmers and by Chinese and God knows who else. And so the Republicans are saying, look, we'd like to follow the money and see, collect some of it back, what's going on. And that was literally a theft of $100 billion or more of our money. And the Democrats refused to fund a system that would find out who did it. Right. When we were when they were passing Build Back Better, I offered that as an amendment uh, that we dig into the fraudulent claims that are taking place because you had, and not only that, you had so many Americans uh, that never even claimed unemployment that were getting a statement saying, you know, well, here's what you owe because you received unemployment benefits. So we were getting phone calls like that. So this was going on at, at a very large scale, most of it from foreign entities and offered an amendment that we cracked down on this and they voted it down because they wanted to just ram through Build Back Better at the time. The, uh, I got a text here from a, a friend of mine. 87,000 IRS agents have not been hired yet. They've been approved, but the appropriation to fund them, and I would think that would take months, years to train 87,000 new of whatever. They correct to say that uh, the House, you in other words, can say we're not going to appropriate the money, but that will never get through the Senate because of Schumer, never get to the president's desk, which he would veto. So how do you succeed when you're one third of the process? Uh, how do you succeed at that? Well, we have to make the case that the, where, of where the American people stand because politicians do respond to that. And so it is important for the American people to speak out and talk to their senators. And in, you know what? you know what people never seem to do Bill, they write their congressmen, they'll write their senators. Why don't you write the White House? Why do not enough people in America actually write the White House and tell them what they, what they would like to see happen? Um, one, the president doesn't run except every four years, and then they're in the second term, they really don't care maybe what you have to say. But I think it's important if public opinion is shifting, and, and in this case, I believe it is. I mean, you go out and 
You talk about not going, being able to find people that can fill this job. How about people that say, I love the IRS and I'd love to see more agents. You're not going to find them. So I really don't understand why they make this a point, but people need to speak up throughout their communities. Watching the cable shows this morning, Chuck Todd, many others are kind of angry at the idea that it's become public that Joe Biden held out of office as a vice president and some connection, University of Penn, and that receives millions of dollars from the red Chinese government, but nonetheless, that's a secondary issue, that somehow Joe Biden has engaged in the similar behavior, allegedly, that Donald Trump also engaged in. And the media and the Democrats are rounding that corner saying, now, wait a minute, completely different, no obstruction of justice. But everyone, when you get down nuts and bolts, you're on the Intelligence Committee. You have individuals like Adam Schiff and and Swalwell and others that walk out and give news conferences about confidential information. There's millions of documents that are either secret, top secret, or SAP program. That should not be that way whatsoever. We have millions and millions and millions of top secret documents. Keep the bureaucrats happy. And can you make the case that what Joe Biden did out of office as vice president was a serious breach of national security? Well, I, I, unfortunately, I can't make the case the way I would like to because in either circumstance, uh, the agencies involved ha have refused to give us a brief on the Intelligence Committee. Now, we may subpoena them on that. When the Mar-a-Lago raid took place, it was Republicans on the Intelligence Committee that held a press conference. We, we didn't cry foul. We didn't say that something was wrong. What we did say is, if this is the national security risk that you're saying that it is, then we should be briefed on what that national security risk is. That's our responsibility on, that, to provide oversight over the intelligence community and to provide for our national security in that regard. And we never got a brief. We asked for it publicly and we asked for it formally. We never got it. But there are some differences. The vice president does not have the ability to declassify any documents. Now, Donald Trump can claim I declassified these documents because the president does have that authority or did have that authority when he was president as opposed to a former president. So there are differences there, but uh, I believe, I would guess in almost every administration, that somehow those that run the archives didn't necessarily do their job of vetting what leaves the White House. Because to me, that's what it really should come down to. So yeah, okay, you found out about this, President Biden, and you called the archives. Maybe you knew about it and thought maybe you just better do and admit to your sin. Um, and, and maybe that's different from the president. So the president has his case to make, but the vice president is in a different situation. But either way, the national security risk that may be presented is something that we should be briefed on, and they refuse to do that. And of course, who funds the intelligence community? Uh, the, the Congress does, right? You do. And so, this and so is, you have, yeah, you're on exactly. top of, yeah, you, you're, you're on top of, or you're responsible to make sure the laws of this country are faithfully funded and executed. And the bureaucrats are constantly telling Republicans in the Congress, we don't have to give you that information. I, I'm watching about a month ago when, uh, I'm not sure it was you, but I, I saw a couple senators, Tom Cotton, Josh Har Hawley, have on Christopher Ray the director of the FBI and his top two or three assistants, the deputy director of this of intelligence, and each of them was asked a question. Can you assure the American people on January the 6th, there were no undercover FBI agents working with, for example, the Oath Keepers that went into the Capitol and committed crimes inside the Capitol as FBI agents. Now, it, it, you've served in the military, a 25 year veteran, you just retired. The answer is no, Senator. No FBI agent would have gone into the Capitol on January the 6th to, to, to commit a crime therein. But he said, I can't answer that question. I don't want to answer that question. Isn't that a, isn't the, that a red flag? Well, one of the things that they hide behind uh, that they've made up and sort of has become the norm, even though it's not, I don't believe in statute, is where they say, well, we have an ongoing investigation and we don't comment on ongoing investigations. Well, <laughs> guess what? You do have to comment on ongoing investigations to members of Congress, especially in the intelligence community, because that's what we are assigned to do, is to have oversight over the activities of the intelligence community. And this is what they're refusing to do. To this date, I cannot see the case file. They refuse to let me see the case file 
um, of their investigation of what happened at the baseball field in 2017 when Republicans were shot at. And, and fortunately, we all survived and Steve Scalise survived. Um, but they won't let us see the case file where they came out and said this was just an attempt for suicide by cop, which he, he Christopher Ray did change when he was publicly humiliated. When I took him through the events of the day and said, they don't, this guy didn't even know police were there. How did you come up with this? Well, they came up with it because they didn't want to say, in my mind, they didn't want to say that a, that a Democrat, a liberal opened fire on Republicans trying to uh, cause an insurrection and change the balance of power in the House of Representatives. So they call it suicide by cops. So he changed that to domestic violent extremism, but he won't let us see who is responsible for these things. We're going to subpoena it, uh, and we are starting to, Republicans and Democrats, by the way, are starting to tell the intelligence community, you don't give us the information you, we want specifically, then we're withholding the funds that go to you, to your Good. point that I think you were trying to make. That's it. Well, Congressman Brad Wenstrup, we got to run. A lot of stuff going on today. I want to talk to you about... Uh, about the SARS reports from overseas that the Biden family had uh, access to millions of dollars through Hunter Biden. I wanna talk with you about what's happening in communist red China and the bot farms in Russia that did not impact the 2016 election. I wanna talk to you about 695 million fentanyl tablets seized last year on the Southern border, seized 10 or 20 times that amount got through. I want to talk to you about the collapse of the major cities, the collapse of urban uh, public education that cannot continue, but I'm up against the clock. Once again, Congressman Brad Renstrup, good luck. There's lots of work to be done. Hopefully you'll, you'll get the answers. And once again, thank you for coming on the Bill Cunningham Show, Congressman. Thank you. We'll be here for you. Thanks, Bill. God bless you.